For this example, we are going to solve a linear equation that has fraction coefficients. If you remember, coefficient is just a fancy name for the number in front of the variable term. Um, in all of my years of teaching, I have found that the equations that involve fractions always seem to be the hardest for my students. Uh, this is something every time people see fractions, they panic. Um, just remember that fractions are just dividing. So the nice thing about this is that we can undo fractions whenever we have an equation. Whenever we have an equation, we can get rid of the fractions by multiplying because the opposite of dividing is multiplying. So what we want to look for is the lowest common denominator. So we want to look for the lowest common denominator that any of our fraction terms have. Since we have 2 and 4 as our denominators, our lowest common denominator is going to be 4. Because I can do 4 divided by 2, and I can also do 4 divided by 4. So what we want to do is we want to take our common denominator, and we want to multiply each of our terms by that common denominator. So I would do 4 times 1 half x minus 4 times 5 equals 4 times 3 fourths x. So what we're doing is because we're multiplying everything by the same number, it keeps our equation balanced. It does not change um, the equality statement. It keeps it as an equivalent expression. So we do want to um, multiply everything by the lowest common denominator. We would then simplify what we have. So I would have 4 times 1 half, which is really just the same thing as 4 divided by 2, which gives us 2x, minus 4 times 5, which is 20, equals, and here 4 divided by 4 is just 1, so we would have 1 times 3 which gives us 3x. So now we have a much easier equation to solve. Once it gets to this form, I find that students find this much um, simpler than dealing with the fractions. You could keep it as fractions, find the lowest common denominator, combine like terms, but I've found that it's much easier just to get rid of the fractions altogether. So now we would solve this like we have all of the other linear equations. We want to get all of our x terms on one side, so we would subtract 2x from both sides. And when we do this, this is a nice one because it just gives us that x equals negative 20. So we are finished. We have a solution for x. And then remember that we always want to check. We always want to make sure, does our answer make sense back in the original equation? So I would take half of negative 20 minus 5 and see if it is equal to 3 fourths of negative 20. So when you're multiplying this, if it's really complicated, I would definitely use a calculator, but this one's pretty simple. So half of negative 20 gives us negative 10 minus 5. And for this side here, what I always tend to do first is I do the dividing first if I can. So I can take negative 20 and divide it by 4, and that gives me negative 5. So I really have 3 times negative 5 on this side. Um, you can multiply first because 3 times negative 20 gives us negative 60 and then divide that by 4 but I find that it's easier to divide first because it makes the number smaller and then we would just simplify both sides to make sure that they are equal to each other so we end up with negative 15 on the left and 3 times negative 5 also gives us negative 15 which works out so negative 20 is indeed our solution um, so I hope that this helps clear. Remember, anytime that you have fractions, you can always multiply by the lowest common denominator to get rid of those fractions, and then you end up with a much easier equation to solve. As always, thanks for watching.